The high-tech solution, Florida is deploying robotic rabbits to help capture invasive Burmese pythons in the Everglades. It's the ultimate Trojan horse, but for snakes. Over 100 rabbits were secretly placed in the Florida swamps, but these rabbits had wires, batteries, and thermal cores. They were a high-tech trap for the Burmese python, an invader that has eaten the Everglades down to the bone. The mission was to lure the predators into the open, what happened next, however, was completely unexpected. The robots revealed a startling truth about the pythons and about the other apex predators that are also crazy about this new prey. The Ghost Predator Problem To understand why Florida resorted to a robot army, you first have to understand the enemy. The Florida Everglades is a one-of-a-kind wilderness. It's not a swamp, it's a slow-moving river 50 miles wide, flowing over one and a half million acres of sawgrass and mangroves. It is, to put it mildly, a paradise for wildlife. But this paradise has been overrun. The invader is the Burmese python. Native to Southeast Asia, these giant constrictors are one of the largest snakes on Earth, easily reaching lengths of 16 to 20 feet. The thing nobody tells you is how they got there. It was a perfect storm of human error. In the 1980s, pythons were the must-have exotic pet. But a tiny, manageable snake quickly becomes a 10-foot, 200-pound monster that eats rabbits whole. Many people, overwhelmed and irresponsible, simply release them into the canals. Then, in 1992, Hurricane Andrew tore through South Florida. The storm smashed reptile breeding facilities, releasing an unknown number of pythons into the wild. What happened next was a biological disaster. The Everglades was a buffet with no predators. The pythons found a warm, wet environment with an endless food supply and no natural enemies. They began to breed. A single female can lay a clutch of up to 100 eggs. Very quickly, the pythons became the undisputed apex predator of the swamp. The cost has been staggering. Scientists at the University of Florida conducted a study that, frankly, is hard to believe. In areas with established python populations, the numbers of raccoons and opossums have dropped by over 98%. Marsh rabbits and foxes? They are gone. Completely vanished from regions where they used to be common. The snakes are eating everything. They've been found with full-grown white-tailed deer inside them. In one famous, gruesome case, a massive python was found having swallowed an American alligator whole. The snake's ambition was too great, and both animals perished in the struggle. You see, the pythons aren't just eating the mammals. By removing the food source for native predators like the rare Florida panther and bobcats, they are strangling the entire food web. The state was faced with an ecosystem collapse. They had to act. The only problem? You can't fight what you can't see. The Burmese python has evolved for millions of years to be the perfect ambush predator. Their spotted, earthy brown camouflage makes them functionally invisible in the dense sawgrass. Biologists could walk within inches of a 12-foot snake and never know it was there. Estimates place the python population in the tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands. They are ghosts, and they are winning. Florida's back was against the wall, and their first attempts to fight back were, to be blunt, a total failure. But the failed plan led to a shocking discovery about the snakes. A war lost on foot. Faced with an invisible enemy, Florida officials did the only thing they could. They declared war. They turned to the public for help, launching a high-profile media event called the Python Challenge. The idea was simple. Turn the invasion into a competition. They offered thousands of dollars in cash prizes for the biggest snake and the most snakes caught. Many people were crazy about it. TV crews followed teams as they trudged through the muck, turning the Everglades into a reality show. But here's the kicker, it didn't work. In the first challenge, over 1,600 participants managed to find and remove just 68 pythons. 68. When scientists believe tens of thousands are breeding every year, it was, to put it mildly, a drop in the ocean. The pythons were simply too good at hiding. The state realized they needed professionals. They launched the Python Elimination Program, paying licensed contractors an hourly wage, plus bonuses for every snake they dispatched. These were not weekend warriors. These were experts who hunted night after night, scanning the canal levees with high-powered spotlights, and they got better. 
they started removing thousands of snakes per year. But the math was still against them. The Everglades is massive. Finding one snake in one and a half million acres of dense swamp is like finding one specific needle in a continent-sized haystack. Scientists tried to get smarter. They developed a new tactic using Judas snakes. They would capture a male python, surgically implant a radio transmitter, and release it back into the wild during breeding season. The hope was that the Judas would lead them to the large egg-laying females. This was a wow factor idea and had some limited success. It led hunters to a few breeding grounds they never would have found otherwise. But it was too slow, too expensive, and too small scale. What many overlooked was the core of the problem. Humans are visual hunters. We hunt by seeing. The pythons live in a world of scent and heat. While hunters were scanning the darkness with flashlights, the pythons were lying perfectly still, tasting the air and sensing the body heat of their prey from feet away. The pythons had a sensory advantage that humans could not overcome. The hunters were losing. The state was spending millions of dollars just to tread water. They needed a new plan. They needed to stop thinking like a human and start thinking like a python. And that meant building a prey that wasn't real. 110 10 Rabbits If you can't find the pythons, you have to make the pythons find you. This was the revolutionary shift in strategy. Biologists at the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, and their partners decided to exploit the pythons' own biology against it. This is where the story gets really interesting. You see, Burmese pythons have a set of biological superpowers. They don't just see with their eyes. Along their jaws, they have a series of pit organs. These are incredibly sensitive thermal receptors. They allow the snake to see the world in infrared, like a pair of military-grade night vision goggles. A python can see the body heat of a raccoon or rabbit in total darkness. They also smell with their tongues, flicking the air to pull scent particles into a special sensory organ in the roof of their mouth. They hunt heat and they follow scent. So the scientists asked, what if we could build a lure that screams hot-blooded meal in the python's own language? The plan was to create an army of decoys, but not just any decoys. They needed to be irresistible. This led to the birth of the robotic rabbit. These weren't toys. Each one was a sophisticated piece of field technology. Engineers designed a rabbit-sized shape, covered it in fur, and packed it with high-tech gear. The most important part was the thermal core. A small battery-powered heating element inside the robot warmed the decoy to 98 degrees Fahrenheit, the exact body temperature of a marsh rabbit. To a python's pit organs, this robot would glow in the dark like a beacon, but heat wasn't enough. They also added a slow-release scent dispenser, which periodically puffed out a mist of synthetic rabbit musk. To complete the illusion, some models were even equipped with tiny micro-motors that would make the robot's ears or body twitch randomly, mimicking the subtle movements of a live animal. These robots were designed to be the perfect, irresistible victim. The plan was approved. In a quiet, experimental deployment, officials and researchers placed over 110 of these robotic rabbits in known python hotspots, remote islands deep in the swamp, along canal banks, and near old mammal burrows. Each robot was anchored to the ground and monitored by a motion-activated trail camera. The teams retreated and waited. They had built the trap. Now they just had to wait and see if the monsters would come. The cameras started rolling, and what they recorded was absolutely insane. When the Everglades fought back, the swamp had gone silent. That was the real problem. Years of invasion had turned the Everglades, a place teeming with life, into a ghost town. The mammals were gone. Raccoons, rabbits, possums all vanished. The native predators were starving, and the culprit, the Burmese python, was breeding faster than anyone could count. The scientists were desperate. They were losing. They needed a new weapon, a silver bullet. But a normal trap wouldn't work. The pythons were too smart, too patient. They were ambush predators happy to wait for weeks. They wouldn't fall for a simple cage. They needed something different, something that cheated. Enter the robo-rabbit. It wasn't just a trap, it was a lie, a carefully crafted high-tech lie. 
It was a decoy built to mimic a rabbit's heat signature. It was covered in real rabbit scent, pumped out in slow, enticing puffs. It was a ghost in the machine, designed to call out to the snakes in the one language they understood. Heat, scent, food. The footage started coming in almost immediately. In the grainy black and white of the night vision cameras, the glowing hot robot sat silently. Then the first visitor arrived. A 10-foot python, its scales shimmering, slithers slowly into the frame. It pauses, tongue flicking, tasting the rabbit scent. It coils, its body tensing. Then, in a blur of motion, it strikes, wrapping its body around the robot and beginning to constrict. The python was completely fooled. It was a massive success. The control room must have erupted. They had done it. They had found the python's off switch. The robots were working. Teams used the camera alerts to pinpoint python locations, allowing hunters to move in and dispatch the snakes. They were finally, finally winning. But then the tape started showing other things. The pythons weren't the only predators drawn to the lures. The thing nobody tells you is that the Everglades is a tough place to find a meal, especially after the pythons have cleared out the mammals. These new, hot, scent-gushing rabbits were like a dinner bell for the entire swamp. The robots weren't just fooling pythons, they were fooling everything. Soon the cameras captured a massive American alligator emerging from the water. It cautiously approached the robot, opened its giant jaws, and chomped down trying to crush the decoy. The metal screamed but held. Then a native bobcat, a predator rarely seen, was filmed batting at the robot, confused by the scent but intrigued by the heat. It was desperate. In one stunning piece of footage, a critically endangered Florida panther, one of perhaps only 200 left in the world, was seen sniffing the decoy. But it didn't just sniff, it watched it. Its muscular body moved like a ghost. It seemed to know something was wrong, but the smell and the heat were too much to ignore. The robots had become a flashpoint for every major predator in the ecosystem. This wasn't just about luring snakes, this was a complete breakdown of the natural order, and it sparked a terrifying theory. What if the robots weren't just attracting these animals? What if they were training them? Think about it. The robots were teaching gators, bobcats, and even panthers to associate this specific heat signature with an easy meal. What happens when a real animal, maybe a hunter's dog or even a person, gives off a similar heat signature? The robots might have been creating a new, more aggressive generation of predators. But the most insane revelation was yet to come. It wasn't just that the pythons were attacking the robots, it was how they were doing it. Researchers watching the tapes for patterns noticed something bizarre. The pythons were using specific routes to find the decoys. They weren't just randomly slithering through the mud, they were moving along the same paths, almost like highways, through the swamp. Even more shocking, the cameras often recorded multiple different pythons visiting the same decoy over a few days. This flew in the face of what everyone believed. Pythons were thought to be solitary creatures, lone wolves of the swamp. But the data from the robots suggested they were somehow communicating. But how? The theory started flying. The first one? Chemical trails. The pythons were leaving a scent, a pheromone signal on these highways that screamed, food here. They weren't just hunting, they were coordinating. They were leaving messages for each other. Then came a wilder theory. Vibrations. Some scientists wondered if the snakes were using low-frequency rumbles, sending signals through the water and mud. Signals that other pythons could feel from miles away. A kind of Morse code for snakes. But the darkest theory was something else entirely. What if they weren't just communicating? What if they were competing? Or worse, what if they were being controlled? The tape showed multiple snakes, yes, but what if they were all part of a hierarchy? What if one massive ancient python, an apex snake, was running these highways, essentially sending out scouts? This wasn't an invasion anymore. It was an organized army. People watching this might wonder, is this all true? Did this happen overnight? The thing is, the robo-rabbit experiment was a game changer. The robots weren't a weapon, they were an intelligence gathering operation. They confirmed that the pythons were far more organized, far more numerous, and far more integrated into the ecosystem than anyone had ever feared. The robots were a wow factor, 
but the truth they uncovered was, to put it mildly, terrifying. Was this high-tech plan a stroke of genius or a sign of desperation? Let us know what you think down below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more insane stories.